If you've ever played on or owned an electric drum kit, you probably know what I'm about to talk about. There are numerous practice dangers involved with practicing regularly on e-kits because of the difference in feel, response, dynamic sound between an e-kit and a real acoustic kit. Now you may be like, Steven, you're such a hypocrite hating on e-kits when you've got a straight up practice kit back here behind you that you play on all the time. No, I'm not being hypocritical because there are generally a lot of differences between e-kits and practice kits, which we'll talk about later. So I need you to hear me out on this. As we all know, we need to be able to practice like we perform. And this has a few connotations, which I will try my best to explain thoroughly throughout the video today. I'm also going to offer some practical solutions and tips to help you out and help you avoid these potential pitfalls if you are restricted to practicing on an e-kit or a practice kit. And we'll also talk about the differences between a lot of e-kits and custom-made practice kits and how those relate. I wanna help you out with your setup, whatever that is. After all, I myself spend a lot of time here on my practice kit because here in the apartment, I can't play loud drums. So let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer, the channel that is all about giving you all the nitty gritty tips and techniques of the trade that help us become better drummers. If you're new and this interests you and this video helps you out, I really hope you'll subscribe. As we get started here, first off, I need to specify this important point. When I talk about e-kits and their pitfalls, I'm generally talking about the lower end electronic kits generally sub $2,000. That's because there are some really nice higher end kits, um, like, you know, like a Roland TD 100,000, whatever level of Roland kit, those, those are some really nice kits that do very well emulate an acoustic kit. And you could very well translate that playing to an acoustic kit. But most of us don't have those. Most of us can't afford a kit that costs as much as a car. So we're really talking about the lower end e-kits that are more affordable for most people. But that aren't always ideal to practice on. So there are a few core problems with e-kits and I really don't need to go into detail here because I think we all know what they are. The overall feel and response of whether it's a rubber pad or a more springy mesh pad or the rubbery plastic cymbals, it's not real. It's not the same as an actual metal cymbal or an actual floor tom. Um, you can't really play a snare rim shot on a lot of these lower end kits. But beyond those obvious things, I think the main issue with practicing on e-kits really goes deeper and it has to do with the sound, you know, what we're hearing, how our ear plays into this, and the overall mixing of our playing dynamics. The thing about playing an e-kit is that you don't necessarily have to be a very skilled and precise drummer to sound good. You can hit a snare on an e-kit and you're gonna be triggering that same snare sample, whatever it is you've got loaded up in the brain. And that's a very well recorded sample. Even if you're not hitting your snare pad dead center, you could be a couple inches off. It's probably still gonna sound the same, you know, unless you've got the high end kit with the digital snare pad that has all these different zones. And the dynamic range of those pads isn't really great either. So if you're playing a quiet ghost note, it might not really sound like a ghost note. And then you start getting really loud and eventually you max out that velocity and can't go any louder. So you're not actually able to perceive accurate dynamics. But more importantly, and deep, even deeper than that is you're not able to perceive the actual mix between the different instruments on the kit. You could have your snare adjusted and mixed on the brain to be louder so that it cuts through and maybe you're not actually having to hit it as hard. Maybe you've got the cymbals mixed quieter in your in-ear mix from the brain because you're slamming them and going crazy and not hitting them right. So your mix to your ears listening through the brain could sound really great. And you're like, man, I got this together. I'm sounding awesome. I could go straight up on, onto a record now. I sound great. But if we put that exact playing technique and move you over to an acoustic kit, it's probably not going to sound so great and the mix is going to sound terrible and there's going to be all this cymbal stuff and an inconsistent snare and it's just going to sound bad. So, okay, you're like, Steven, enough of preaching to me all of these pitfalls of my e-kit. I love my e-kit. I don't want to stop practicing on it. Well, I totally understand if you are constrained to practicing on it. After all, I am constrained to practicing on a practice kit. And we'll talk about the differences between e-kits and practice kits and why I prefer the practice kit in a minute. But before we get there, I do want to offer to you some practical solutions for avoiding those sound dynamics pitfalls on an e-kit. Step one, turn off the e-kit, turn off the brain. Step two, take your headphones off. Step three, practice just listening to the sound of your sticks hitting those rubber cymbals and the rubber mesh pads or whatever. Listen to how that sounds and how your, how your mix is. No, you're not hearing real sounds, you're not hearing an actual kick or a snare, but you're able to hear the velocity with which you're stomping the kick and with which you're hitting the snare and hitting the cymbals. At that point, you can really listen, you can focus on maybe tapping the cymbals lighter, crashing the cymbals 
lighter and actually hitting a cymbal right. That can be tricky because those are often small cymbal pads that don't move the way a real cymbal does, but you can think of it as a real cymbal and practice hitting it that way. Practice hitting the snare a lot harder than you're hitting the cymbals and being solid on the kick. Practice hitting the pads dead center. If you can, try to emulate a rim shot on the snare pad and focus just on precision and hitting it the same way so that you hear the same sound every time you hit it. No, this is not as much fun as hearing the perfect samples through your ear as you're playing, but this goes a long way toward really helping you understand how your physical motions are translating to the sound of what you're playing. That means you'll be able to go from there to sitting down in an actual kit and have a much better feel for how each cymbal and drum needs to sound in relation to the other. Now, once you've done that and you've gotten much more accustomed to playing in the right dynamics, you could put your headphones back on, you could remix those elements of the kit so that it's more realistic, more like an actual kit. Crank up the cymbals so that you can practice not hitting them too hard. Turn the snare down a little bit so that you're actually having to focus a little more on hitting the snare strongly so that it mixes well with the cymbals. And from there, you can more accurately balance yourself if you've got the adjustments correct and accurate there on the brain. So I'm not saying totally ditch your e-kit. You can work with it. You can definitely improve how you're practicing, how you're using it to practice. So now, how does this all fit in with a practice kit and why am I always championing the practice kit because I love my practice kit back here compared to an e-kit? Well, here's why. Building your own custom practice kit allows you to more easily emulate the feel of an acoustic drum set. The thing about an electronic kit is you're pretty much stuck with what you've got there. Yeah, you can go in and maybe you could put Zildjian L80s on it and you could put triggers on them. You could go all out and try to make some adjustments like that, but you're still gonna be stuck with the pads that you've got on that kit, and you may be stuck with the rubber cymbals. However, there are so many cool practice tools and products out there on the market, like the Zildjian L80 cymbals, the Arton Black Hole mesh heads, the um, Remo Silent Stroke mesh heads, the Aquarian Super Pad practice pads, all these different things that you can put onto an acoustic kit to really make a great feeling practice kit. A well-built practice kit will much more accurately reflect the dynamics of a real kit, and the feel of playing a real kit. So you'll be able to imagine yourself playing an actual kit and easily translate that to the practice kit and practice like you're going to perform. That's the whole goal here. We wanna practice like we're gonna perform. If you've already got an acoustic kit at home and you wanna just add the practice tools onto it because maybe you need to practice quietly like I do here in an apartment, well, you can do that at not a huge cost. My current setup behind me is actually a mix of Aquarian Super Pads, Remo Silent Strokes, Zildjian L80s, Arton Black Hole. I've got a little bit of everything mixed to my ideal setup on the kit so that I think it feels about as real as it's gonna get. The Zildjian L80 symbols are the most expensive part of the setup, but they are well worth it. They're super cool, they feel almost just like real cymbals, and they literally sound like real cymbals just with the volume turned down. So you can practice actual ride technique and hitting a crash correctly, playing hi-hats well, which is really cool. Those are 300 bucks. I've got the Super Pad Kick over here on the kick drum. It's $80. I've got the Artom Snare mesh head pad set up on the snare. That's a $58 pad. I've got the Remo Silent Strokes on toms, uh, $14 for the 13 inch, and I believe $20 for the 16 inch floor tom. The total cost of this is $472, which would just be $172 if we took out the L80 symbols. So I know you're like, Steven, that's a ton of money. You could, you could buy an e-kit for that cost. And I've gotten that comment on so many of my videos like, dude, you could just buy an e-kit instead of spending all this money on the practice stuff. Well, this is why I much prefer the practice kit over an e-kit. If you take $472, total cost of the practice rig here, and buy an e-kit for $472, <laughs> you're not going to find a very nice e-kit. It's going to be pretty cheap. It's basically going to be a toy. It's going to be highly unrealistic, and it might be fun to play on, but it's going to not translate well at all. So I know what you might be thinking as we're talking about the practice like we perform and about practicing seriously and all that. Okay, maybe, maybe this does come down to goals because you could be a drummer who is just playing for fun. You're just playing in your basement, jamming with friends every once in a while. If that's the case, an e-kit might be perfect for you. It can be fun to play and it can be fun to sit there and play it and feel like you sound great and that you're the best drummer in the world because you've got great sounds coming into your ears. That really is fun. It's a cool thing. That's just dangerous if you're trying to improve and you're trying to become a better drummer that can play real drum sets well. But if you are a serious drummer who's trying to improve every time you practice, and your goal is to play gigs and play with a band and, and do all that, you've gotta be practicing on a serious practice kit that can translate to the real kit. Practicing on an e-kit is probably not gonna help you. So guys, I'm not making all this up. I've played on e-kits, cheap e-kits, and I know how these things translate, and I've worked with practice kits. If you're new to this whole thing, I hope you can learn from some of these mistakes I've made and learn from these tips 
and some of these thoughts and I hope you can generate the best practice kit for what you're doing and what your goals are so that you're able to practice whatever way you perform. I hope you've hung in there during this discussion because I know people can get really uptight about gear stuff. I can see it now, the comments, um, people upset that I'm hating on electric kits. Like I hope I've made it clear, I'm not hating on electric kits. They're just not the best practice tools and cheap ones can be more of a toy than an instrument. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions in the comments about you know my story with kits that I've used and with my old e-kit. <laughs> I just hope to help you guys out with this as much as I can. I hope that whatever you do, whatever your setup is, you're able to accurately practice with it to prepare you for whatever playing and performing situation you're working towards or you're doing. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Subscribers, thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for supporting this channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I really hope you will. I hope the non-glamorous drum stuff interests you. If you're interested in growing as a drummer and getting more of these nitty gritty techniques, the less talked about techniques, I really hope you'll join this community, join this channel, and we'll all together work on learning more every week and growing as drummers. Thanks guys for watching. Take care and I will see you next week.